What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech and yes, that background is still up and it's gonna get taken down eventually. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about if you've been looking to start a home lab and maybe you're not sure how to or what to get or where to start, this video is gonna cover everything about it and we're gonna get right into it. So I've been home labbing for a few years. I actually started off one of these nice Raspberry Pis. You know, it's a small form factor computer. It's pretty powerful for what it is, and it was cheap. You used to be able to get these about $35 for the base model, and it worked great for learning about Linux and networking and making small projects. And then I expanded and I got some of these Pi Zeros. Again, really good projects. You could do some cool stuff with them, make your own VPN or make your own DNS server. Um, we made videos about those as well. And uh, they were great. Used to be able to get the Pi Zeros for about ten dollars, and all set up and configured. And it was it was great. Uh, but things have changed, and now home servers are more in and everything else. So we're going to talk about all different stuff in this video about starting home web, what hardware to get, what OS to look into, and different projects that you could look out into easily right off the break. So let's stop talking and let's get right into it. So to start with your home lab, you need to choose what kind of hardware you want to run. So if you're looking for something simple, you can go with Raspberry Pis, and I know they're a little tricky to come by, but they are possible. There's a great tool called RPi Locator. They're also on Twitter, and they tweet out. They either use an API or some sort of web scraper, but they are very helpful in working on getting your own Raspberry Pi. This is the creator, super cool guy. Um, but you can see they tweet out when new pies become available and they also have them on their website that will update and they'll take you right to the page so you can come through if you want to buy a pie and you can come through and be able to get the board right there so you can see it brings you right to the page where you'll be able to purchase the board and um, there's a ton of different ones uh, if you're looking at doing it for raspberry pi i would say at least look to get the 3b plus and if anything get a 4b um, at least four gigs of RAM the eight gigs do come up and there are these other ones the CM4 boards you could use these but they need another board to go on to so if you can find both totally get one of these because these are really good boards as well another option hardware wise is to get like these mini PCs which you know I've been working with pretty much this whole YouTube channel I actually have one of these and I just ordered another one the other day actually I have this one and I got it way cheaper than this because I bought it bare bones pretty much. So you can come on eBay and you can search for the Dell Optiplexes, the HP Pro Desks, and probably any of the other bigger named small form factor PCs. But look at this one right here. It comes with an SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, and it is Windows 10, but I would wipe that. At any time that an OS comes on a hard drive from eBay, I'm wiping it and starting over. But look at that, $50, and you can already get... A perfect starting point to start your home lab. I run this. You could look through my videos. We were able to run Proxmox, Portainer, Jellyfin. We were able to make our own Plex server. We were able to do tons of projects off of it. It's a great starting point to see, even if you just like home lab and, and self hosting your own stuff. An important thing to do if you are going to look on eBay for these mini PCs, a lot of them don't come with the power adapter. You see this list in. Scroll me back up. Let's see. Where is it? Uh, this listing says it comes with it. So you gotta keep an eye on it because it, you would hate to order one of these and it comes and it doesn't have the power adapter. But you, these are perfect little machines. You can see it actually has some good ports on it. Not that you're gonna use it because it's gonna be a headless unit most likely, but you wanna make sure it has a good CPU and a decent amount of RAM. And you could always upgrade these to more RAM. Um, you can look into the device by just searching it and it'll tell you the specs so you can go to arc.intel and it'll give you all the information about the processor so it's a two core four thread processor which realistically for running dockers let's say this is perfect it's not going to consume a lot of power unlike my server that I built for my first home lab um, but this would be a perfect little workstation to start with for your first home lab. Now, some people might want to go into something a lot bigger when they start their home lab, and that's okay. 
if you actually come over to the home lab subreddit there are really good information on all sorts of things so maybe you've already messed with the raspberry pies or you've already messed with the mini bcs and you've grown out of them and you're looking for something bigger they have wikis on pretty much all the information you need to know about buying larger equipment so somebody wrote these nice write-ups and it actually breaks down these are for enterprise based servers which i wouldn't want to run in my house maybe you have a different environment somebody broke down by brand by by uh model which ones to avoid which ones to get and all this information about it they also gave you software buying guides networking gear all sorts of information on the subreddit which i'll link it below to help you source hardware uh, i used this when i was putting together my server super helpful and uh, I learned a lot. I also learned that right after I built my server, I didn't build it the way I should have, but that's what all this is about. This whole home lab process is about building, learning, and repeating. So now I know for my next build what I want to do better. The next step in your home lab is you probably want some, some sort of virtualizing software. I like Proxmox. You can get the community edition for free. There's tons of help online with subreddits or the forums or just looking at basic research on it you can come into the virtualization and then we get the basic VE so this is the Proxmox virtual environment which I run on all my servers and it's just a simple download and a simple install I've made videos about this previously maybe I'll drop a card up below about how to set up Proxmox it's actually my first video that I ever made on this channel but Proxmox is super simple and it is uh, probably one of the first virtualizers you want to mess with. Coming up next in your home lab, you're going to need an operating system to actually run your virtual machines off of, or maybe you're just going to run a uh, bare bone server. You're not going to virtualize anything. You maybe just want to run an Ubuntu server, and maybe you're going to put Docker on it and run a couple of other tasks off of it, which is fine. You can do it that way. I would probably say use Ubuntu server. They have their 2204 LTS. That means it's the long-term one, it has support. Uh, you could choose the older versions, but it might not be as supported anymore. So I usually just run 2204 on all my servers. But I use this on all my virtual machines, all my Docker machines are based off of Ubuntu server. It's lightweight, it's good to run in the background, and it's a very good operating system to learn with. There's a ton of support online and you can go through and you can find a lot of good information or different Discord channels and people are always there to help that already know the issue you probably ran into. I've had a lot of times where I, before I learned about FSTAB, I broke FSTAB, didn't understand it, was able to find help about it. Um, I broke my network interfaces file, I was able to find help to fix that. You know, there's, there's a lot of good information on here on Reddit or sub... Um, Discord channels or even just basic Googling, I'll be able to find information of how to fix this. There's a ton of support out there. So Ubuntu server is a really good option if you're looking for your OS when you start spinning up VMs or physical machines. So now that we talked about our hardware, our operating system, and now we're probably going to start looking into more what kind of project we might do. So a really good option when you're looking into projects is Docker. So if you're not familiar, Docker actually runs off of a machine and it makes it so you can containerize all of your different uh, activities you're looking to run so it's sort of like what a DevOps does by deploying software so like uh, you can run Bitwarden a VPN you can run uh, Jellyfin Plex a Minecraft server all of one machine and Docker's gonna make it so it prioritizes the hardware usage and splits it up equally for what's needed across all the services. Docker is super helpful. When I first started my home lab, I never understood it. And I would always watch videos about it and the video would start off, you probably don't need Docker. I think everybody needs Docker. There's always a situation where Docker is going to be helpful. I actually just had a friend who was talking to me about a server. He was spinning up all these VMs to do different things. One was to run just a VPN and one was to run Pi-hole and this and that. and. I said you need a docker and in return he killed three vms ran one for v uh, docker and solved all of his problems docker is definitely a good option i have videos about it so i'll put cards up for that and then to go with it so after you add your docker and then you have portainer it's super helpful 
Um, like I said, I made tons of videos with it. It makes it super easy to deploy systems and start your projects. So like I said, Docker and Portainer is a great combo and it's a great starting point to start learning how to administer your own server. Um, by using Portainer, after you configure it, it's really simple. I actually always use this PyHost template and what's even better is they give you a guide. So if you don't like my video, you can come over here and you can use Nova Spirits guide. It's a little different depending on what you're using. It supports Raspberry Pis, but it also supports AMD64. So you just gotta read through the installation guide for your use. And then afterwards you use the right template for what you need. So if you're ARM or if you're AMD64, you just pick yours and you go from there. But after you do, you get all these great templates that we know work for the most part. Sometimes they run into an issue with updates, but their support team is always there fixing it. You get all these great templates that are already catered to home labbing and self-hosting your own services. So I use about 20 of these. We can come over to my dashboard. I have 32 actually, but only maybe about 27 of them are actually being used. These are all my templates that I actively use and they're great. I love using Portainer. It's a great way to come in and manage and deploy new containers. I can come into my containers. I could easily select one. I could restart it, I could pause it, I could kill it, I could update it, I could do whatever I need through here instead of using the CLI. So maybe you're new to home lab and you're not really comfortable with the CLI, Docker's really into using the CLI, Portainer's a good option because you get a nice web GUI interface instead. I love Portainer, I think it's a great option and especially if you're new into home lab, it, it offers so many different paths that you could choose and like I said with the app templates you always have a project you can work on. Uh, like I always wanted to work on Caliber. I just never got into it. You do a little research, you can make your own Caliber server and you can get your own book servers for your Kindle and stuff like that. Maybe you're a programmer and you want a code server so you can access your code anywhere. VS Code, anywhere you want. Uh, there's a lot of good containers on here. There's a lot of good options. And it's just something to definitely keep in mind when you're making your home lab. So I know this video had a lot of different information in it and you might want to pause it and go back and research stuff as I talk about it and I would recommend doing that so you can really look into what the best option for you is to start your home lab. Um, a home lab could have a bit of a buy-in and it's definitely something that you want to research before you start buying equipment. Uh, I had a great example. I wanted to build a server so last summer I built a server. I spent all this time researching into hardware, motherboards, RAM, and all sorts of stuff, and I thought I had a great option, and I did. But it wasn't the best application that I could have used for the money I spent. I ended up spending about $900 to $1,000 between my hardware and new parts that I had to buy, and I bought used parts, and I also had stuff that I already had in my house that I was using on my server. I ended up making a pretty good server. Um, I use it every day. It is good, but I could have made it better by just adding a bit of a different hardware mix. And that's what all this is about, is you get to learn. And I learned from what I built, and I know in my next version, I'm going to be able to build something different that's going to be better, and it's going to be still good for what I need it to do. So that's what all of Home Lab it is. It's all about learning and rebuilding and going from there. And it's a great skill to have. It's great to have in your house. Like I said, even if you're using a little Raspberry Pi, this is perfect. What's the worst that happens that you mess something up, you wipe out the hard drive, you know, the little flash card, you reformat, you re-put Raspbian on it, now you start over. So what, you lost a half an hour maybe, and you get to redo your project. It's, it's a great thing to have, and it's only gonna help your skills develop as a IT, whatever you might wanna be. If you wanna be an engineer, you might wanna be a sysadmin, a network engineer. These home lab skills are gonna help you build them, and what better environment to do in your own house than have to go somewhere, go to school, or you know, pay somebody else to teach you stuff when there's all these resources online. So I hope you watch my videos when you want to learn stuff, but there are other ones out there that you can use, and there's tons of guides out there. So I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you figure out what you want to do in your home lab and pick those next steps. Definitely make sure to check out some of my other videos because I do have tons of home lab guides, especially on a budget. Most of my guides you can work on for under $150, and if you already have the equipment, you can keep rolling it into other guides. So, like I said, thanks for watching. I hope you like the content. I'll see you in the next video.
Have fun home lab.